Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our service for today for both St. Peter's and St. Oswald. Welcome if you are joining us on one of our Facebook pages or on our YouTube channel through the website. It's great to gather, great to gather together this morning to worship God. A fortnight ago in our Cafe Church service, we were looking at the theme of calling and we're going to be continuing uh, with that theme for uh, this morning's service and in a moment after our first song we're going to be handing over to Katie and then after that Mick is going to be interviewing Leslie from St Peter's and Roy from St Oswald's about their sense of calling. But we're going to begin with a song. This is a song that the music group from St Peter's have recorded for us. It's Come Set Your Rule and Reign. The words will be on the screen, so please do join in as we sing together, Come Set Your Rule and Reign. No. 
Today's craft is called Called by Name and you are going to need a piece of card, a plate or something else to draw around, a pencil, a pen, some scissors and ribbon. So first of all you want to get your plate or other circular object to draw around and this should sort of uh, maximise, you should really aim for the biggest circle that you can get from your piece of card and then just cut that out. Next up, you're going to take your pencil and you're going to need to uh, sketch um, your name or if you're making it for somebody else, then their name. Obviously, the length of your name will slightly determine uh, how big you can do the text. But as, as you can see here, I'm doing mine fairly big. And part of the reason for that is you've then got the task of cutting it out, which uh, the longer the name, the more intricate it's going to be. So this is probably where you need to get your grown up or adult to help you. Once you've cut it out, okay, it should just look like that so you can see through it. We're going to write the really critical part of this craft and this is what it's really all about. It's a verse from um, Isaiah 43 and it says, I have called you by name. And the whole point of this is this is just going to serve as a visual reminder that all of us no matter our age, no matter where we live, no matter who we are, every single one of us has been called by name by God. If you want to add some decorations on, you can do that, stickers or pom-poms or whatever it is uh, that will make it you know, look exciting and nice for you. Then just use a hole punch to uh, make a little hole at the top of your circle and then pop some ribbon or string on that. And then, as I said, you can pick somewhere to hang it. It could be in your bedroom, it could be by the garden, but somewhere so that every day you have that lovely reminder that every single one of us is called by name, by God. And at the very basic level, we are called to be his followers and to love one another. And that is something that every single one of us is capable of. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Well, hello, everybody. And uh, two weeks ago, we, we began this process on talking about calling. And I'm really delighted to have Roy Lane from St. Oswald's and Leslie Hooper from St. Peter's, just to continue that theme for our, our final session today. So again, as I did with Tim and with Peter and with Stephen last time, I asked them four questions and I'm going to ask Roy and Leslie the same four questions. So to begin with, I'm going to go to Roy. And Roy, the first question is this, um, what do you understand by the term calling? Well, as, as I said earlier on when we were talking, I have a bit of a problem with calling. I can remember working at Rolls-Royce and that, and people actually knew eventually that I was ordained. And they used to come up to me and ask all different questions. Uh, sometimes they challenged me, which was great. But a number of them used to come up and say, Roy, what's this calling business? And I used to say to them, well, what do you mean by calling? And they said, well, do we talk to somebody? I said, well, not in a voice way, you know. I said, I really think it's really about awareness. In our lives, we have different feelings and such like. And we have good feelings and bad feelings. And when it comes to faith, I think that awareness grows and grows on us and, and that. And we want to find out more. Sometimes it, the awareness lets us down. But in all, you know, we have that inner feeling inside us that there is somebody who loves and cares for us. And we're well aware of actually that as well as it goes. Oh, that's, that's excellent, Roy. I really like, you know, that that 
I, that inner calling, that, that awareness. I really like that, Roy. Let me just come on to Leslie now. Leslie, what do you understand by the term calling? Well, I would describe it as a persistent uh, emotional and intellectual nudge uh, in a specific direction. Um, I, I think it comes from God because the word calling impl implies that there is a caller. Um, um, we know that God calls everyone um, um, into a, a relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. Um, he also calls um, us individually for uh, special purposes, um, which would be part of his plan for each one of us. I, I do believe that every Christian is called personally to something. Um, I don't believe that one role is more important than another role. Um, yeah. I think we may be uh, called uh, to different things at different times in our lives. Um, from the age of 10, I only wanted to be a nurse when I grew up. Um, I didn't want to be anything else. And it was wonderful because I was able to study all the right <laughs> all the right uh, topics uh, for, for doing that. And I trained as a nurse for three years at the BRI and I thought of it as my vocation. Uh. When I became a Christian, I saw it as a, a, a specific calling. Um, after our children got older, I returned to nursing as a practice nurse in a doctor's local surgery. And I used to pray for the staff and patients before I went to work and when I got home from work. And I thought the Holy Spirit was the greatest practice nurse in all the world. Um, and John also, when John was nine, at primary school, all the children were asked to write a poem about the school. And uh, John's poem was chosen and they somebody set it to music and it became the school song for a number of years. And now John records music and songs to help us in our worship, including a few of his own. Um, was that the seeds of a calling before we even knew Jesus? We, we think mm -hmm. it may well have been. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Les both Leslie and Roy, I think you've, you, you've, you've really broadened it out beautifully uh, for me. Thank you so much. Let me just come back to you, Roy. Um, what, do, what do you enjoy about the role you've been called to? As an NSM, over the years, uh, and there's quite a few years now since I've been an NSM, uh, I've been privileged, I would say, to look after three different churches during their interregnums. And it was an eye-opener in many ways, <laughs> looking at it, that, you know, your reaction and your way you get on with different people and such like. And I had great sympathy even more for full-time clergy you know the challenges that they had mm -hmm. um, but I really enjoy knowing and discussing talking to people about their faith and what it means to them sharing what it means to me also and above all at times being challenged by them I can remember in work being challenged one day quite strongly when somebody who worked on the shop floor came to me and said you say there's a god in heaven why did he let we'll say his name was fred have a wife who dies then in six months time he meets another lady and she within six months passes away 
and that and he really had a go at me um, and I said to him at the time will you give it please a few weeks and then come back and say to me what you feel the reason was I knew that his daughter in Ireland was about to have a baby later on after two weeks all of a sudden the office door opens and in he comes and he said to me I challenged you Roy and he said, now I know what you mean about God. God is there no matter what happens to each and every one of us. And it was just, as I say, an eye opener for me, you know, what people can say. In a silly way, I used to go to meetings and uh, the people in the, the office or the meeting, they'd swear occasionally as happens and that. And they would look round and say, oh, sorry, Roy. And I always thought and said to them, it's not me, you know, you're actually apologising to what I represent. Of course, I had to go very careful and be honourable to the firm, Rolls-Royce, who paid me and that. But uh, very different ways in which people have challenged me and also shared, and it's great. Oh, that's, that's terrific. I'm just aware of time and want to move us on a, a little bit. Um, yep. Uh, I, I just going back to you, Leslie, I, I'm sure there are things that you enjoy as well in terms of your role. But I'm going to ask you, Leslie, what is it that some of the hard things that you find in your role? Um, I often feel very inadequate for such a role as being a lay minister. Uh, I still get very nervous uh, delivering a sermon, although I, I love the solitude and the process of creating a sermon. Um, I still get very nervous delivering and leading it. I'm, I'm still absolutely astonished that God has asked me to do this at all. Um, but I decided some time ago that God could uh, use my anxiety to keep me close to him. So I now offer him the sermon mm -hmm. and my nerves as well. <laughs> um, I also find it difficult sometimes to switch off from church life. Um, it can linger around in my head when I'm, I'm not there. Um, that could be a bit tiring at, at times. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. And, and, and just going on to the last question uh, that I asked you both, I mean, what, these have been difficult days for many people, the third lockdown, there's lots of good light coming at the end of the tunnel and so on. But just for each of you, I started going back to you, Roy, what is it that keeps you going, especially in these COVID-restricted COVID days? Well, the way you're able to contact people, which I, I do by telephone messages and that, um, and people are so eager, okay, to share how their feelings are uh, and such like. So, you know, the telephone is really has been a really big bo boost and that. One of the things I'm sad about, of course, is I, I've taken some funerals recently and you can't go and visit the people and it seems such a shame. But, of course, we or I say to them, you're in our thoughts always and we're praying for you. And will you please pray for me and the family as well? Thank you, Roy. And, and you, Leslie? Um, I've got quite a list, actually. <laughs> Things that keep me going. Um, my early morning time um, alone with God, I mean, I've lost count the number of times that words and ideas flow mm -hmm. and that I feel uplifted and encouraged. And then I take John a cup of tea and uh, we pray and do a devotional together. Those two things are, I can't do without, they're, they're very precious to me. Um, my other callings, calling being a wife and a mother and a grandmother <laughs> and a friend. Family Skypes, reading, right. gardening, right. Uh, gardening TV programs, 
Um, but also, um, in preparation for this, when I thought back over the last year, which has been a very bad year right across the world, I was reminded that with God's help, and using our callings and our gifts and our skills, we've been able to continue to provide a weekly service of worship, pastoral care, um, Bible study groups, prayer support, children's work, and plan future projects. And um, I find that really encouraging. Um, <laughs> And it helps me to look towards the future. Um, yes, indeed. indeed. Oh, that's really positive. Uh, well, our, our time is gone. And I want to thank you, Roy and Leslie. And, and part of the reason for doing these interviews is that people at, at, at St. Oswald's and people at St. Peter's see you both in the congregation. They see you up the front serving us. Um, and I hope that through these through these little interactions together, they've seen a little bit more of, of the heartbeat that you have and the breadth of your thinking you know, as well. So thank you very much for taking part. It's not the easiest for you, but thank you very much for taking part. So um, we're just going to close these interviews now. And our next hymn following these interviews is Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Thank you very much. Thank you to all those who have taken part in our service both today and 
a fortnight ago as we've looked at different aspects of calling. And I want us now to, in a sense, go full circle and return back to our starting point a couple of weeks ago when we reflected on the fact that calling is both a uh, specific and can be unique for each one of us in various different ways, but also there's a sense in which we are all, we all share a common calling in Christ in terms of becoming more like him. And I want us to reflect a little bit on what that means for us this morning. And to help us do that, I thought I would use this book, which some of you may have heard of. It's called The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. Uh, it might immediately strike you as a children's book. It is, in fact, a book for all ages. It's written by someone called Charlie Mackesy, who, in fact, is a Christian. He worships at Holy Trinity Brompton in London. But it's not a specifically Christian book, but it is a book that's full of wisdom. And it includes these four characters, the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. And uh, I thought I would uh, just read... Um, to begin with, uh, Charlie's words of introduction, which just tell us a little bit about these four characters. The boy is full of questions. The mole is greedy for cake. The fox is mainly silent and wary because he's been hurt by life. The horse is the biggest thing they have ever encountered, and also the gentlest. They are all different, like us, and each has their own weaknesses. I can see myself in all four of them. Perhaps you can, too. So I thought we'd put that to the test a little bit, really, and... Uh, the, the book is really uh, the story of the interactions between these four characters. And I thought as we reflect a little bit on calling, that I would pose some questions and thoughts about calling and allow the characters from this book to give us their words of wisdom, which hopefully we will find helpful. One of the main things about this book, which unfortunately you won't be able to see too clearly, is that uh, Charlie Mackesy really is an illustrator. And uh, the book is full of beautiful illustrations of these four characters. And in fact, one of them, which I'll just uh, briefly show you there, that illustration there, that is being used as the uh, illustration on the comic relief t-shirts which are on sale now. Comic Relief I think is on Friday week um, and that is the illustration that's being used on it and the words that accompany it are very interesting as we reflect on calling because we often think of calling perhaps in relation to an occupation and uh, the mole asks the boy a question. What do you want to be when you grow up? Kind, said the boy. Maybe we link calling to having a sense of purpose in life. If we feel that we can somehow discover what our calling is, then we will have a sense of purpose. I've realised why we are here, whispered the boy. For cake! asked the mole. To love, said the boy. And be loved, said the horse. How do we view achievement? Perhaps we see achievement in terms of fulfilling our calling. What do you think success is, asked the boy. To love, said the mole. Perhaps one of the things that many of us struggle with is, if we're being really honest, not necessarily perhaps having a great sense of calling and purpose. Sometimes I feel lost, said the boy. Me too, said the mole. But we love you, 
and love brings you home. One of the other things, or perhaps even traps, I think, that we can see in regard to calling is that it can become a very individual, personal thing, my sense of calling. And we can ignore life's interactions with each other. And it's perhaps that that lies at the heart of calling. We are all interconnected with each other, whatever role we play. The fox never really speaks, whispered the boy. No, and it's lovely he is with us, said the horse. Perhaps calling is simply living well with each other. Doing nothing with friends is never doing nothing, is it? asked the boy. No, said the mole. To have a sense of calling appears as a strength. But God also calls us to be vulnerable. What's the bravest thing you've ever said, asked the boy. Help, said the horse. What are some of the things that we struggle with in life and therefore in having a sense of calling. Perhaps we struggle with a sense of our own insignificance. I'm so small, said the mole. Yes, said the boy, but you make a huge difference. Perhaps we struggle with our sense of self-worth. Sometimes I think you believe in me more than I do, said the boy. You'll catch up, said the horse. Perhaps we struggle with our sense of insufficiency. What's your best discovery? asked the mole. That I'm enough as I am, said the boy. So those are some words of wisdom from the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. But I want to finish with some words of Charlie Mackesy himself. He writes this. When I was making this book, I often wondered, who on earth am I to be doing this? But as the horse says, the truth is, everyone is winging it. So I say, spread your wings and follow your dreams. May God help each one of us to recognise the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse that are within each one of us and take those words of wisdom to our hearts and recognise that sense of calling that we all share in Christ to be more like him, to be more loving to one another. In Jesus' name. And now Judith is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. My grandfather's favourite Bible verse came from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And it says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And praise God, they did. As we join together this morning in prayer, let us ask our Lord to show us how he would like us to respond to his calling. Father, we thank you for those who serve us day by day. Help us to remember, to encourage them and to thank them. Help us to notice the little things people do for us, whether at home, at work or at play. 
Lord, we know that service, helping those around us, doesn't have to be doing big things that people always notice. It can be very small things. An encouraging word, a smile, holding somebody's hand when they're worried or sad, sending somebody a card or a letter, sharing our favourite books and toys. Father, help us to remember that in serving others, we are responding to your calling and sharing your love and promises so that others can know you too. Tomorrow, lots of children and young people will be going back to school for the first time in a long while. We ask that you will especially be with all of their teachers and helpers, and we ask that you will bless all the children as they meet with their friends. Please help them all to feel safe and happy and to enjoy being together again. We ask you to bless all those who are feeling unwell, sad or lonely, and those who have lost loved ones. Please be with them and those who love and care for them, and help them to know your peace. We thank you for all those who have responded to your calling by taking your word and your love to others, not only here, but around the world. Thank you for those who work for Compassion and Tear Fund, and many other organisations who care for those who wouldn't otherwise hear about you. Thank you for those who have been called to serve us in our church families and for those who help us in our walk with you. Lord Jesus, please help us when we're not sure if we're serving you in the way you want, when we doubt ourselves or our ability to do your will, when we feel discouraged or when we don't feel that what we're doing, that we're doing a very good job. The book of Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 7 says, But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Please help us to remember that you are thrilled and rejoice with us, no matter how small our offering. Lord, you have given each one of us gifts to use in your service. We thank you for them and ask that you will help us to recognise them and know how to use them for your praise and glory. There's a wonderful hymn I used to sing as a little girl and it says this. God, make my life a little light within the world to glow. A little flame that burneth bright wherever I may go. God, make my life a little staff wherein the weak may rest, that so what health and strength I have may serve my neighbours best. Let this be our prayer today. And Lord, we pray that when you call us, we will hear you and respond. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Julian, for leading us in our prayers. And thank you to everyone who's taken part in the service today. Thank you to uh, John and the music group for our songs, to Mick and Roy and Leslie for the interview, and to Katie, and also Katie and Sam for putting the service together. So lots of people involved one way or another. Thank you to all of you for your contributions. Uh, please do join us next Sunday for our service, which of course will be for Mothering Sunday. So we look forward to that. We're going to finish this morning with a song, This Is Mighty to Save, Everyone Needs Compassion, which, flip, which uh, picks up a little bit on some things we've been thinking about today. So please do join in as we sing together, Mighty to Save. Needs 
forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Thank you. 